Hi, it's Hugh Culver again. In this short video, I want to talk about procrastination. And I know I could make a joke about how we could just maybe do this later, but isn't it true that procrastination is something that impacts all of us? I mean, I certainly know that there are many things that I still procrastinate just a little bit about. I'm a lot better, but it impacts all of us. So I thought in this short video, I'd talk a little bit about, well, why do we do it? Um, what is it that we need to do so that we can stop procrastinating? And then how are we going to make sure that we get that success along the way? So first of all, well, where do we procrastinate? Well, it could be, I mean, all sorts of things from making that sales call to actually sitting down and, re you know, reducing the clutter in your work area so you can get focused. Maybe it's about finishing that report or having that tough conversation with that colleague or that employee. Maybe it's about getting your, your bookkeeping or your taxes done. Maybe it's about, you know, going for some exercise or taking a break. There's lots of opportunities during the day for us to procrastinate. And the reality is there's just as many excuses. Now, we may think that it's our personality. And I think that actually has an impact on it. You know, I'm not the kind of person you might say. I'm not the kind of person that, uh, that's, that, that uh, has to stick to a certain game plan. I'm a free thinker. You know, you might think that, well, I like to uh, go with my urges and my impulses. And if I think something, you know, is important, I'm just going to go jump over and do that. Or you might say, well, I know I need this time. Like I need this time to chill out, to be creative, to just, you know, to try and, uh, to try and be a little bit less fixated on, on plans. The reality is that there is a time for everything. There's a time for chilling out. There's a time for being creative. I mean, all of us in the day need time where we can just basically do simple things because that's where our energy is at. The other excuse you might have is that urgent stuff comes up. It's the nature of my life. It's the nature of my job. I got kids. I got these responsibilities. I got, you know, the, the, the nature of our business is that the clients are calling and when they call, we got to jump. So, so here's the problem with that excuse. The problem is that if we make the exception, the norm, then everything becomes urgent. And we never really get things done because we're, what we're constantly doing is we're actually waiting for that next crisis to happen. Because as soon as that crisis happens, we know what we're supposed to do. It's sort of like the way that most fire departments work. You know, there they are, they're highly trained, they're well equipped. But basically, they're waiting for the next crisis because in crisis, they know exactly what they have to do. So whether it is a little bit of personality or it's a little bit about the nature of your work that requires you to, you know, sort of have to always jump and put out fires, I think that there is a better way. And in my case, I would procrastinate about things like bookkeeping. You know, if I had a choice between talking to a client or working on a new program or making a video like this and bookkeeping, uh, <laughs> the choice is pretty easy. I'm probably going to do some of those other things than bookkeeping because in my mind, you know, bookkeeping, it's just not that exciting and uh, it seems very routine and, you know, I might even think to myself that, you know, really there's more important things for me to be doing. But the reality is, if I don't do it, it catches up with me. And the next thing I know, I have three months, they aren't finished, the bookkeeper is calling me, and they're saying, well, where is that? I might even have problems keeping on track so that I am ready for my year end. So it does catch up. The other reality is that it doesn't take that long. It doesn't take that long. 30 minutes a month, and I've probably got what I need to get to my bookkeeper. Now, for you, it might take a little longer. If you're doing it all by yourself, it might take a little less. But it doesn't take that long. In fact, Dr. Joseph Ferrari at the University of DePaul, he says that there's a number of things that we typically think when we are procrastinating. First of all, we um, overestimate how much time we have. We think we have a whole lot more time than we actually do. We um, underestimate how much time it will take to do the job. So, for example, we might think, oh, I can get that done in, in five minutes. The reality is we need to be realistic about how long these tasks do. So we overestimate how much time we have. Oh, I got all sorts of time, I can do that later. We underestimate how long the task will take. Oh, it's only five minutes, 
It's no big deal. I'll just do it at the end of the day. Uh, the next thing is we, we overvalue how we think we need to feel. In other words, Dr. Ferrari says that we believe we need to be in the right mood. That's what we think. We need to be in the right mood for, for us to be able to get that done. So for me, I might think, well, you know, when I feel like it, I'll go and do the bookkeeping. When I feel like it, I'll go and make that sales call or return that call from a client. Uh, when I feel like it, I'll get myself organized. Uh, but right now I've got other things to deal with. So what Ferrari, Dr. Ferrari says is that we put too much value on how we feel. We think that that's, a, that's an important component of whether or not we'll get work done or not. But in fact, how we feel is actually a very small contributor to our success. You know, I love the line from um, a, um, the Olympic athlete that says, there's only two times that you need to exercise to prepare for the Olympics. When you feel like it and when you don't feel like it. In other words, sometimes we need to do things even though we don't really feel like it's the right time to do it. All right, so if it's true, we all procrastinate. And it's true, we would like to change that behavior even a little bit. Well, what is it that we need to do? Well, certainly, I think it's important that we have a planning structure. I'll talk about that in a minute. But before we get to how we sort of plan and make sure that things happen, I think we need to deal with the sort of subconscious messaging that's going on. Because you see, even if I have a great planning system, and certainly you probably know that I'm a big um, advocate of having two plans always in place, the action plan, which is where I need to be by Friday, and the day plan, which is where I need to be by today. But in addition to my planning, I need to deal with this internal messaging that's going on. Oh, I don't feel like it. It's not the right time of day. I've got more important things to do. It can wait. It won't take more than a few minutes. So how do I deal with that? Well, I like to think about those sorts of decisions like a scale. So like an old fashioned scale. And like an old fashioned scale, we've got something that has more weight and something that has less weight. So let's label this one as avoiding. So on this side of the scale is avoiding. And let's label this side as doing. So like an old fashioned scale, if this side has more weight, we put more value on it, we actually um, focus more on why that that is the way it has to be. We come up with reasons as to why that's the right decision. It will get more action. It will be more likely to happen. And this side, the doing side, the side that logically we should be doing, logically we think is the right thing to do, we don't put much value on that, so it's less likely to happen. So rather than dedicating from three o'clock to four o'clock to actually work on that report and not finish it necessarily, but to get a good head start on it, so that we would actually do it and have it done on time, we avoid it because we think, well, gosh, my energy's not right and you know, I've had a really busy day or we think that uh, you know, I need five hours to work on the report so we don't do anything. All right, so how do we get away from this procrastination scale? Well, what we need to do, I believe, is we need to tip the scale and the way we do that is we need to give more value to doing than what avoiding gets. So we need to have bigger payoff. So when our brain is making that decision, should I do it or should I avoid it? The doing side has to have a bigger payoff. So here's a simple example. When I come to work and I have my action plan for the week and I have my day plan for the day, I've created those the day before, I'm feeling jazzed and pumped up, I've got my big cup of tea, I'm ready to go. The first thing that I'm gonna do, like most people, is I wanna see what messages have arrived since I was at, a, at work last time. So of course I'm gonna look at my phone, I'm gonna to look to see if any staff have left me messages, and I'm gonna look at my computer, which of course has something called email, and it's sitting in an inbox. 
which is an enormous invitation to avoid what I know I need to do. Because you see, at that point, the email has a potential payoff. Oh man, look at this, I can answer, and it shows that it's been read. I can send a message, and I can, I can answer, I can take care of their question. I can read this one, and I can say, oh, that's junk, and I can delete it, or I can, I can postpone it till later, or so I can get this immediate feedback. So the jobs that I planned on doing in the morning, first things, the ones that really long-term have the biggest payoff, talking to the clients, having difficult conversations, design work, um, anything to do with budgeting and financing, all that important work that has the biggest payoff gets avoided because avoiding is giving me a payoff. The email is giving me a bigger payoff than the doing. So how do I tip the scales? What I need to do is when I arrive in the morning is I need to have in my mind an obvious payoff for crossing those items off that I came in to do. So the items on the do side have got to have more value than the email or the distractions or the idle conversation or the thing I found on the web to look at that day. So that's the first thing is I need to be convinced that there's a payoff in the doing and it's quite simple. I just need to make that conscious decision that this will give me a bigger reward than all of this time filling stuff that leads me to procrastinate. All right, so let's break it down into a system. Well, here's the system. The first thing that has to happen before you come in is you've gotta have over here is your action plan for the week. So what am I planning to do? Remember, that's a short list. That is the most important things that have gotta get done by Friday. Very important. It's hard work to create that list because you wanna make a huge list, but it's gotta be there. So you have your action plan for the week. The second thing is, You've got to have your day plan, which is the list of things you're trying to get done today. So you got your plans in place. The next thing that's really important is you need to take the day plan and chunk it down even more so that you've got things that are probably 20 or 30 minutes in length. Of course, meetings are exceptions and certain big projects are exceptions. But try to get things down to 20 or 30 minute chunks so that you can actually easily cross them off. The more headway you make, the more successful you feel, the more likely you are to keep on going. So you wanna chunk them down. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna to start to either like literally block time on your calendar so that it actually, there's a chunk of time that's earmarked for you to do that work or you wanna block time mentally. Like for example, by 10.30, I need to have this finished or from 10.15 to 11 o'clock, I have 45 minutes and all I will do is work on this. But either way, I think it's really important to block time and you say, this concentrated period of time, I'm, it's no different than going to a meeting. This concentrated period of time, I'm only gonna work on this one project. It's exactly what we do when we have a conversation or going to a meeting, we say, all I will do is focus on this one uh, topic at, at a time. So you need to have a plan, you need to chunk it down, you need to block the time, and then you need to stick to your plan. So yeah, what I have learned is that it is really easy to procrastinate and to vacillate and to delay and to excuse myself and to create great reasons why something can wait. But the reality is, I always have in the back of my mind, is that the reason I put it on the plan is because there's a reward waiting for me. I feel fantastic when I reach my action plan. Like I feel fantastic when that plan is crossed out. And I feel great when the items on my day plan are crossed out. So in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, it will feel so good to cross those out. It will, like that's a huge reward for me. So plan, chunk it down, block the time, stick to it, and then reward yourself. Now, this may seem really elementary, but I believe in many ways our brain is quite binary. It likes stuff, it doesn't like stuff. And I think that when you do hard work and you give it something that it likes, it goes, I want more of that. So when I cross that thing off my list, that gives me a little bit of a charge. There's this little bit of a feeling like, yeah, you know, I did it. But I also might get up and go get a glass of water. I might go outside and go for a little walk. So I think that when we cross stuff off, we should have a little bit of a reward. 
So there you go. If you procrastinate at all, first thing I'd like to encourage you to think about is, well, what is the excuse that you give yourself? What is the payoff on the avoid side that is weighing heavier, giving you more of a return, as bizarre as that seems, than the doing side? The second thing I'm gonna ask you to think about is, what would you have to do to tip the scale so that in fact, the avoiding gives you less return and the doing gives you fantastic return. You feel really fulfilled. You feel like you are moving forward. You feel proud of what you've accomplished. So tip the scales first of all, so you know there's a payoff. And the second thing is to look at is plan, chunk it down, block the time, stick to your plan and then get the reward. All right, I hope this has been helpful and we will see you next time.